So a cell at the periphery of an eyeball dies through apoptosis. Recognition of apoptotic cells prevent release of intracellular contents. And there is inhibition of pro-inflammatory cytotoxic release. We need this inflammatory cytotoxic release in order to create an environment that the Tregs will be inhibited and that the immune system will come and uh, fight the cancer. Antigens are presented in absence of danger signals leading to immune tolerance. So you must have the inflammation in order to prime the cryo as an immune booster, as an immune therapy. So the ratio of necrosis to apoptosis might play a critical role in determining whether we get stimulation or suppression nature of the immune response to cryoablation. Rate of freezing is another reason that could explain why some of the cells don't die, because uh, as it happens, uh, there is an effect on creating apoptosis instead of necrosis because the freezing was too slow. And either during this video blog or next video blog, I'll uh, discuss the issue of how we try to resolve the point that some cells in the periphery, they don't get destroyed and still we are able to destroy them by other means, but not by cryo. And that's a topic of chemo immune therapy and it, this will be discussed either during this video blog or in future blogs. Another reason that the cryo cannot create immune therapy is the question, the, always the problem of too much is not good and too little is not good, but large amount of frozen tumor create large amount of immune complex that overwhelm the system. This generates high zone tolerance. When you have too much immune complexes, then somehow the Treg jump in and try to control not to get really a very aggressive immune response and that creates an area of uh, tolerance and antigen overloading may lead to immunosuppression. There are other thermal ablation modalities and uh, not cryo that are being tried. One of them is the radiofrequency ablation. The other one is the high intensity focused ultrasound. But the problem with those thermal modalities is the fact that they destroy the protein and they destroy the antigens and that's why I doubt they will get such a good response like with cryo. Non-thermal treatment like radiation, electroporation, also they started now, it's very popular now to combine in different immune therapies. So now they try even to combine radiation together with immune therapy and electroporation with immune therapy but this remains to be proven. So the Treg, I want to stress the point that Tregs are a subset of CD4 cells actively recruited and induced by the tumor. The Tregs are influenced by the tumor. That's how the body doesn't recognize the tumor because the Tregs, they are told by the tumor to, to be active and to block the priming effect of anti-tumor T-cells. T-regs have a potent ability to suppress immunity by inhibiting the cytotoxic T-lymphocytes and also the natural killer cells. Suppressor cells that accumulate in tumor are immature dendritic cells that suppress the anti-tumor immune response by interfering with antigen presentation and blocking T-cell function through the production of arginase 1 and activation of inducible nitric oxide. This is just one example that we could understand the mechanism and perhaps create treatment and research uh, re revolving around these substances. Dysfunction of dendritic cells in tumor microenvironment, alt alteration in the T cell receptor signaling and expression of inhibitory core receptors are also enabling here to either suppress or activate the immune system. So far, this, this problem of um, receptor signaling and expression and all that, they further interfere with generation of anti-tumor response. And we'll talk in the next slide about the checkpoints. 
Multiple animal studies have demonstrated augmented response using cryoablation with other immune modulators. Cytokines like GMCSF, that by the way, the immune modulator we used in our rat experiment in the lab, they promote dendritic cell activation and migration and form the basis of cell-based vaccines using tumor cells transduced with GMCSF. And there are some uh, immune treatments that are using the production of GMCSF by those cells. Irradiated tumor cells transduced with GMCSF are injected into the patient where the cells undergo death and in the presence of GMCSF tumor antigen are more efficiently taken by the dendritic cell. So we see that we add GMCSF to facilitate the work of the dendritic cell in the right direction to present the antigen to the T cells that will be cytotoxic to the cancer. TLR, it's tall like receptors on T cells, play a role in T cell activation and function. These are type of receptors on the T cells. TLR expressed on antigen-presenting cells serve as a main pattern recognition receptor with key roles in inducing of innate immune response, as well as subsequent development of adaptive immune response to initiation of DC maturation process and induction of cytokines. Basically, the antigen-presenting cells go to the tumor and take the toll-like uh, materials and they bring it to the T cell and the T cell knows because he's seen the TLR and knows that they have to amount an attack to be cytotoxic against those tumor cells. Lubarov in Dunning R3327 model in Copenhagen rats, he enhanced the anti-tumor immunity by, this was achieved by combining cryoablation with BCG. BCG is actually weakened uh, strain of, of um, tuberculosis. But this is a TLR agonist. This increased the activity of the TLR. And you see when you give a BCG, a TLR agonist that acts like a TLR, it increases the response of the T cells to go and get an anti-tumor immunity. Multiple studies in animal models also have shown the efficacy of CPGS in potentiating the anti-tumor immune response when used alone or in combination with other immune stimulating agents. So you see there are other proteins and substances that could be used to facilitate the response of the body to the cryo boosting of the immune system. So you get already the gist of it. That there are all kinds of things that we need to try and do the research to try to take advantage of the freezing and perhaps limit the freezing just to be as an immune booster and not to use the freezing as destroying a lot of tumor because then we have some problems when you destroy too much you may affect the patient especially when it's prostate cancer and the cancer may be close to very vital structures like the nerve for erection or like the sphincter for urinary control. So by giving cryo as an immune treatment, uh, we hope that the immune modulation will help with the cryo to go after the tissue that was not frozen initially, but will be destroyed by the body, by its own immune system. Ben Brock demonstrated that in situ destruction of tumor by cryoablation combined with DC activation by GPCG can constitute in situ DC vaccine that can augment anti-tumor immunity for metastatic control. So this researcher already demonstrated that if you activate together with GPC, you could get metastatic control. This was done in animals. Combination of cryoablation with another substance, GPG-ODN, provided superior protection against tumor challenge through increased DC maturation. So in this model, they did not show that it destroyed metastatic disease, but it showed that if you boost the immune system with CPG-ODN, you increase the DC maturation and 
antigen cross presentation, similar results were reported in melanoma using a very known drug by the name imiquimod, so, which is also a TLR agonist. So you see a combination of cryoablation with this substance, CPGODN, or together with imiquimod, may potentiate again. And so far we see a variety of substances that could potentiate the cryoimmune response even more. Antigen uptake, maturation, and presentation by the dendritic cell is enhanced when the antigen is coated with antibody. That's another example for breast cancer, where they added antibodies to the tumor than when there was freezing and, and, and my DC were applied, it was enhanced. Using antibodies specific for tumor antigen, a cryoimmune response can be augmented against metastatic tumor. Tumor antibodies such as humanized anti-prostate-specific membrane antigen in combination with tumor cryoablation can form an immune therapeutic strategy to control advanced disease. And that could be done in combination or that could be done um, even independently. But independently, the immune system will go only after the PSMA. But here, when you combine it together with the cryoablation, with the immune system already primed up, because the freezing itself is interpreted by the body as a danger signal. So you give the danger signal, you create immune response, and you also give PSMA antibodies, and together they get better effects. Here we have another researcher, researcher Michael Machelenkin, I hope I can pronounce the name correctly, forgive me, studies combination of intratumoral immature D cells. Please pay attention now. They injected into the tumor immature D cell injection with cryoablation in Lewis lung carcinoma. Very interesting. So they did not let the body have its own dendritic cells go on their own and visit the area of the battlefield, but they injected directly the dendritic cells, remember the antigen presenting cells, directly into the area of battle. Cryoablation alone failed to achieve any significant anti-tumor immune response. Combination modality demonstrated significant tumor-specific CTL, this is cytotoxic tumor, uh, 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 cytotoxic T lymphocytes response, diminished lung metastasis, increased survival, and increased resistance to tumor challenge. So you see cryoablation together with the injection of the dendritic cells achieved all these good responses. To summarize, let's look at this uh, schema. Here you have the cryoablation, and we inject intratumular dendritic cell injection right into the area. And here what's happening, there is uptake of dying tumor cells with the antigen, but they could choose a variety of antigen, not according to the Provange uh, treatment, the dendritic uh, classical treatment, where they take the dendritic cells out of the body and they stimulate them, but they present them only with one antigen, prostatic acid phosphatase. Here they take the dendritic cells, they don't train them outside of the body, they bring them directly to the battlefield, and they hope that they will choose the, from the right menu any antigen they want, and these cells are traveling now and migrate to the lymph nodes where they could train specific T cell activation to go after the specific cancer because now they have specific addresses of specific antigen of those tumors. 